call uh, Todd Muller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, well, well. This is a day of infamy, in my view, for the bipartisan trade policy that has underpinned this country for 30 years. To stand and hear and listen this afternoon to the Labour Party who for 30 years have stood alongside the National Party fighting for New Zealand's interests on the world stage and who have had David Shearer and Phil Gott and Mr Parker and Clayton Cosgrove all in the select committee all shaking their heads at their party's position, all former trade ministers or involved in trade policy, they know that what their party gives voice to today is disgraceful and is the end of bipartisan trade policy agreement. And quite frankly, when you listen at their case that they have put here today, it is abysmal. And they know it. And they know that the, when they stand on the platform next year and argue around the vision of New Zealand and connecting it with the world and ensuring that we have the systems in place to back our small businesses, everyone listening in the audience will know they are hollow because it means nothing to stand here and oppose a trade agreement which supports small businesses and exporters and their efforts around the world. And Mr Speaker, to hear Grant Robertson, uh, articulate as he did not only his anxiety dream, which uh, perhaps was a disclosure too far, uh, but putting that aside, to listening to him, to talk about trade and, and the feedback that he's getting around the country through the lens of the corporations versus the small uh, New Zealand individual and family reflects typically a class welfare view and a perspective that he learnt at university and hasn't grown up from. When is he going to realise that the companies of this country, which, uh, which spend all their effort negotiating and trying to sell their product around the world, is full of New Zealanders? The, country, the company I work for, Fonterra, 17,000 New Zealanders work for them on behalf of 10,000 farmers. That's another example of a corporation that they feel doesn't reflect uh, their perspective of New Zealand. Well, with respect, they are so far out of touch of how this country makes money, how families in New Zealand are successful, that their argument today, like I say, Mr Speaker, uh, is uh, uh, completely hollow. And then they talk about the future of work. Well, Mr Robertson, this is the future of work not some esoteric academic exercise. It's creating an opportunity for New, Zeal New Zealand exporters to succeed on the world stage. The Trans-Pacific Partnership is the future of work, and the sooner that party understands the reality, uh, the better. But I, with their uh, current leadership, I have no hope. And isn't it interesting that all their former trade ministers, their former leaders, Helen Clark, Mike Moore, people who they salute to on their 100th year of the Labour Party. People have underpinned their success for a generation. They're the ones that are saying TPP is something that they could not even imagine not supporting. But the hard left of the Labour Party, they would rather be pure in their own mind and commit themselves to the fourth consecutive elective defeat than front the reality of what it is like to be part of a global uh, environment and support our small businesses and exporters. Barry Coates, uh, Mr Speaker, he made a comment uh, earlier that I simply have to rebut. He talked about Jane Kelsey getting access to our report. Sir, it wasn't uh, the department, it wasn't our uh, committee report. It was uh, a, a draft that had been uh, uh, leaked uh, uh, earlier, uh, and we certainly as a committee hadn't uh, uh, finally reviewed it or indeed deliberated on it. So your uh, reference there is uh, inaccurate, and it would be... Uh, uh, I pay you to just circle back with those who are involved in that process and get closer to it. Fletcher Tabato, who unfortunately, um, Fletcher Tabato, some of his uh, comments, uh, Mr Speaker, I'd also uh, uh, like to rebut. For him to stand up and say that this agreement is going to drive greater inequality in New Zealand. Yes, again, and yes, of course, you're going to echo it because that's your small, narrow-minded perspective. Because you simply haven't understood, you simply haven't understood the reality here of standing beside small businesses who get up every day and put their capital at risk 
to try and sell a product and service on the world stage and win an agreement that provides New Zealand opportunity to connect with close to 40% of world economy, and of which 40% of our exports currently go to. And we have negotiated agreement with 12 parties, an agreement that successive governments have been uh, seeking to achieve. And we finally get that to stand and say that this is going to drive uh, greater inequality simply doesn't understand the economy of this country and the importance of trade to it. Uh, and uh, that is what I take issue to. He's a fine man personally, but on this particular uh, uh, point of uh, uh, issue, uh, he's way off the mark. Mr. Uh, Speaker, it has been uh, a, an extraordinary process. We had uh, 80, 80 uh, uh, plus uh, submissions, Mr. Speaker. And we've already heard some of the themes uh, that came through that, those uh, uh, conversations. Uh, and uh, submissions. But one of the things that I uh, found very interesting listening to them, they were largely the same theme or view that somehow this was going to uh, constrain New Zealand businesses, constrain New Zealand governments able to uh, 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 make law as uh, we see fit, despite, as we've heard again this, this afternoon, very clear uh, confirmation from the Attorney General and, and explicit in the agreement that that's not the case, a view that somehow uh, where Farm Act model is going to be impacted when again we heard from the officials very explicitly that New Zealanders will not pay more for subsidised medicines as a result of TPP. And the fact is that for each one of these submitters, they would raise this issue, we would point to the particular component in the bill and in the agreement, and they say, oh yeah, but that's not what I feel, that's not what I think. And whilst I respect their opinion, the fact is that this uh, uh, agreement and this bill does not in any way uh, impact um, our Farm Act model. Uh, the same thing with respect to uh, investor-state disputes. There are high hurdles that have been put in. Uh, and again, we've had ISDS provisions in our previous uh, uh, trade uh, uh, deals. Uh, and despite the fact that that in no way has uh, challenged uh, uh, New Zealand's uh, success in implementing both those uh, trade deals, but also our government policy, that again did not seem to hold water for those who were philosophically opposed, actually, in my view, uh, to trade as a vehicle of lifting the quality of life and uh, direction of, of, this, uh, of this country. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in terms of uh, some of the uh, specifics, uh, from, certainly from my uh, perspective, I mean, there has been some talk here around the uh, economic analysis uh, 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 being uh, light. Well, actually, I agree it's light in the context that the number that w was provided, I think, will be well less than the actual value that will accrue to this country uh, for being part of the TPP. And I don't say that just from, uh, you know, in, in a carefree way. We look at the facts. For the Chinese uh, uh, FDA, it was a significantly greater, a factor of four greater, uh, in terms of the actual economic benefit that, uh, tr uh, that has accrued to this country from being a part of it. Uh, the officials' view is understandably conservative because they take the current uh, number, the current trade uh, uh, figures and they remove and quant value and quantity and remove the tariffs that we're paying on that. But of course what history suggests that as you open up a market that uh, provides an exponential opportunity uh, for our exporters to succeed on the world stage. So I agree the numbers are light. When it says $2.7 billion when, the, when it's in effect, I think it's going to be well north of that. But more importantly, sir, and to finish, this is, and you have heard from the, we have heard from the debate this afternoon, a defining difference in the political philosophies that are represented in this House. And I, for one, am absolutely certain that the philosophy of backing our exporters with a trade deal that connects us with uh, 40 per cent or just under of the world's economy and providing them a platform for them to succeed uh, and grow through the reduction of tariffs over time is exactly where we should be. It reflects exactly what small and medium and large businesses across this country would expect from this government and it's the leadership that I'm very proud to support and I am very much in favour uh, of this bill and, this, uh, uh, and uh, moving to the next stage. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, the